And welcome back to The Daily Wrap, everybody. It is time for my favorite part of the, part of the show. It's time for Political Potluck. Political potluck is bring a story to the party, just like bringing a dish of potluck, a dish of potluck to dinner. So first, let's start with the Reverend Jenny Crumpton. What do you got? Okay, y'all. Who is more powerful, the Koch brothers or the Pope? Koch or Pope? Ooh, Koch, Koch or Pope. Pope. So the Koch brothers have just pledged about nine hundred million dollars to really push their economic conservative candidates in the upcoming ele election. Mm -hmm. Along with that, they're doubling the amount of money that they're investing in a business and economic school that they just established about a year ago at American Catholic University, which is in the Washington area. Um, what got interesting was that a lot of Catholic theologians and academics wrote the president of Catholic University to say that the Koch brothers' ideology in their mind is completely off the mark with traditional Catholic theology, especially now that Pope Francis is on the scene talking about poverty. He's talking about the increase um, in the gap between you know, the wealthy and the poorest of the poor. So will they take the money? Wow. I, I've I, got my answer. You do? Yeah, Coke. I'm afraid it's Coke. Look, you, you know. You think they're going to capitulate? Well, it's because I don't think the Pope's vow of poverty or all of those wonderful things that I love the Pope for saying pays the bills at the Catholic University. <laughs> so I'm guessing. Well, the Vatican Coke. does sit on billions of dollars. Yeah, but you're they don't, aware you're right. That. Yeah, but they don't <laughs> well, give it to them. Here's, yeah. here's another point. Um, Catholic University is the one American university that is sanctioned by bishops. It's run by the Catholic Church. Right. So, um, you know, it has to sort of keep up at least a front of holding on to the ideologies of the Pope and the concerns of the Pope. So, You're only a reverend when you know what's up. I know. I only went to some Coke or Pope? Years. Wow. I'm going with both. I'm a Catholic, and I'm also a big fan of the Koch brothers, and I don't see a disconnect here. Yes, they're hardcore capitalists, and yes, the Pope has been saying some things against crony capitalism, really, not capitalism overall. He makes a big issue about poverty and income inequality, which I agree are big issues, but the way to combat that is capitalism. So I see a huge connection. If you agree with the Pope, you support people like the Koch brothers. Wow. I'm going with they I both. I don't know. A lot of Catholic oh, bishops disagree with you. A lot of Catholic Maybe bishops so. completely debate disagree. Well, let, let's transition. We'll, we'll go to Rick's potluck in a second, but I'm just curious, since AJ is single and, and you're a reverend, if she theoretically <laughs> wanted to get married, you could marry. I could marry you. <laughs> really? Maybe Tonight. Sure. Let's do it. Who are you yeah. I'll find someone. I mean, you're, I, I love you. You know that. But my wife is, you know, you would, would have some We need to imagine the celebrate. Rick has some friends yeah. by the home. Yeah. Anyway, sir. Anyway, I was up? fascinated this morning with Governor Chris Christie, who is enjoying some time in London, where he's apparently uh, sharpening up his foreign policy skills, uh, and made a statement about, um, about vaccinations, where he said that parents should have a choice in this. Bad move. He had to immediately come back and turn around on that. Right now we have this measles epidemic going on. People are freaking out about their kids getting sick and they're wondering why they're getting sick because somebody, other kids' parents didn't vaccinate that child. Bad move, Governor Christie, sign of things to come. Yet another Republican governor screwing the pooch. <laughs> Well, in you your know, opinion, I mean, in this, my is a, opinion. A, I, this is a topic that really just cuts right down the middle. It's really amazing. You, right. you can talk to anybody in polit a political strike, and they will have a, a different opinion. Yeah, and it, it really is a clash of the freedoms. I mean, right now, schools kind of have the legal liability because they're the ones letting kids who are not vaccinated into the schools. Now, some schools are better than others that, uh, at, you know, sort of taking care of medically frail kids who would be at risk. Others are not. Um, you know, I think we're going to have to come up with some way to strengthen those systems within schools and communities to really combat this. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's scary. If I, I, I don't have a child, but if I did, I would be really worried. Yeah, I don't either. But I think it's just as you said, it's a clash of freedoms. Where does my freedom start to infringe on yours? It's the same reason mm -hmm. drunk driving is a horrible thing, because you can decide to go and get in a car and drive drunk and kill yourself, but you might kill me in the process. Exactly. Same thing with the vaccines. Yeah. Go ahead and decide not to vaccinate your kid, but you're putting somebody else's at risk. 
So it's a very, from an intellectual, philosophical basis, it's a really fascinating and I read a you, you have a kid. I have grandkids. Mm -hmm. I don't want my grandkids getting really sick from somebody yeah. who didn't vaccinate their kids. What about you? Well, you're, you're, you're pointing at me as if I automatically well, agree with kids. Chris Christie. No, yes, I don't yes. know where you are. I'm okay. asking. All right. Don't so I, I have a 15-year-old right. daughter, and I would want it mandatory that all kids were vaccinated. Right. I, I would not want her exposed. You know, I read a capacity. blog this morning by a woman who has a child who is resistant to um, immunization. Every time he got immunized, he would have a terrible asthmatic reaction and had to be tiny little baby on a ventilator. Yeah. So what do women like that, you know, in her well, situation do? So we really have to, yeah. you know, I think I, I completely agree with what you just said. I would want um, my children vaccinated and all the children around my children vaccinated. Well, but we, we also have to come up with some policies either way we, to really protect. We appear to have some some agreement. Yeah, uh, Rick it, as well yeah. with his grandkids. What about your great grandkids is what I would want. I know, can't wait to meet them. Oh, outstanding. <laughs> On that note, we got our age joke in on Rick Unger, which is a yeah. prerequisite for this show. Coming up next, more on political potluck. This is The Daily Wrap, and it's only on Newsmax TV. And welcome back to the show. Let's continue with political potluck. AJ Delgado, que pasa, muchacha? All right, so speaking of que pasa, let's take it down to Miami and talk about Senator Marco Rubio. Ah, si. You all might remember he was at the top of his game a couple of years ago, then had the amnesty push and fell from grace. So there's been some talk about two weeks ago, it started when he had a very favorable poll showing right underneath Mitt Romney in second place. And you've had some heavyweight pundits like Charles Crothammer saying they're putting their money on Rubio being the nominee. I tend to agree. What do you guys think? Is he resurrected? And does he have a shot at the nomination? Well, let me, uh, oh, excuse me, my mouth is dry. <laughs> Jenny, let me, Jenny let me, let me, wait, excuse me, my mouth is oh. dry. Very funny. Very funny. I mean, what, what, what does Rubio have to bring to the table? Well, let, let, let me explain that joke first. Yes, All right. in case so you when, got it. when Mr. Rubio was doing, I believe, a Republican response to the State of the Union, yeah. he may or may not have taken a, a couple of sips of water. Now, as, if you can look below this that desk that right that's now, a, that's a you would blow. see that yeah, I have at least seven down. bottles over there. It, it gets very exactly. hot in here. You, uh, We're getting here like this. Can Are you planning on running for president? And the difference being that he actually reached for the water on camera. You wait until we're off. You're bringing up something from what? Oh, I was just kidding around. Just kidding around. <laughs> I'll give a whoa, whoa. serious answer. Serious answer. The answer is no. He's not ready yet. He, uh, listen, I think he has a lot of skills. I really do. Uh, I like, uh, it's, it's a good thing for him and his party that he comes from the Latino community. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a bright guy. He's a well-spoken guy. He doesn't have the gravitas as yet. And he's got some real serious issues, I fear, or maybe I'm thrilled, um, in, in what he did and where he was. Not, I'm not suggesting he did anything terrible or anything, but I think that there's going to be a lot he's going to have to answer for from his Pre -political earlier life. Pre-political career. Pre I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's young, he's hip. He represents the type of diversity that I think a lot of millennials who are going to be strong in the polls and in the voting in 2016 are looking for. But I think he has to get a lot more experience yeah. under his belt and not bend over so far to grasp at that water. Wow. I, I'm with Rick in terms of, I'm, I'm about optics because I'm a media guy first. Mm -hmm. And for, forget the water thing for a second. When he <laughs> speaks, he doesn't fill the screen. He feels smaller yeah. to me. And I don't mean height or anything like that, but I don't feel the presence that I would feel with the president. He's a senator and I, I can deal with that fine. Even vice presidential candidate, maybe. But President Rubio, there's just something he needs a little bit more. Something. He just guy? seems too young. I don't know if I think it's confidence. Experience. I think it's just more some people have gravitas. 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 Right. And when you they own speak. the room when you walk right. in yes, kind of thing. Right. Exactly. And I, I just get that feeling he doesn't own the room quite he, yet. He seems like the president's little brother. Yep. And we'll end it on we'll end it on that note because well of course we have to get to my political <laughs> potluck. And it happened yesterday, Super Bowl pregame, Savannah Guthrie interviewing President Obama on NBC, and they had somewhat of a beer summit. So let's go to this clip right now and why I'm so damn angry about it. Are we gonna try this let's, beer let's or this what? Th this is the honey ale. Okay. Uh, made from Honey from Michelle's garden. That's how this originally came about. Somebody in the Navy mess figured out that you could make uh, 
beer using honey. Okay. So let's taste it. Let's All right. It. Well, it's I'll been well reviewed. Okay. Has it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's see what you think. I'm gonna take a tiny sip. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so enjoy much. Enjoy the game. Savannah, and get enjoy the beer. You should finish it before our full interview. Uh, It'll yeah. make it go I don't think that's gonna happen, but thank you for. Where where are we, Manhattan? She was looking for a little gray goose, a little uh, Patron. That was a sip. She barely put her lips to the glass. And, uh, and there you have the President of the United States. I don't care whether you disagree with her. And I know everybody at home, I wouldn't drink a beer with the President. I'll get over it, please. The President offers you a beer that he brewed with honey from Michelle's garden. And uh, da, 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 da. one second, I'm not done yet. All right. It, who knew that honey even exists in gardens, which, which Rick just brought up while we were watching that. But the President offers you a beer he took a swig, you take a swig, and he says you should finish it. And she goes, I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, what? You need a little drink with an olive? You need, what do you, what do you Carrie Bradshaw on Sex in the City? And you need your Kelly little martini? Savannah Guthrie? What? Stop tapping. I'm trying to make a point. She's breastfeeding. I guess you've never breastfed. Well, she has a cute little girl whoops. named Vale, and she's breastfeeding, so she couldn't have her beer. You can't, wah, wah. you can't drink while you're, you're breastfeeding? <laughs> well, you could, but your child might get drunk. <laughs> so, she... But why... Uh, but, uh, all right, all right, right. Here, here's the thing. All right. So, Turn NBC sets up that little, the little beer thing. And they go to the president and go, oh, you want to do a beer thing because it's a Super Bowl interview? And she agrees to it. I know, Don't agree I to know it. what the GOP can run on. Obama tried to force a breastfeeding young mother to get drunk. Oh. Wow. No. He must be a Democrat. <laughs> On national he television. He must be a Democrat. How <laughs> dare he? To answer your question, no, I have never breastfed. I didn't think you would. I gained enough weight during the holidays where I'm actually like a C cup now. It, it's horrible. And on that note, and enjoy that visual, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's destroy the tape in the control room. This never happened. I'm telling you, that's like it never happened. You might, never you might have wanted to tell me about the breastfeeding thing before I went off on that. Anyway, coming up next, if I'm still allowed to work here, we're going to look back on last night's Super Bowl. Yes, the ads. How did I do with my bets? This is the Daily Wrap, and it's only on Newsmax TV.